Welcome to Mount Rushmore National Memorial in the Black Hills of South Dakota. Um, one of the more iconic landmarks in this part of the country. Um, and we're here mainly to talk a little bit about the geology because the geology involved in the construction of this monument is pretty interesting in and of itself. So thanks for joining me, geology professor Sean Wilsey on a nice, calm, beautiful morning. And we're gonna look at the monument here from a couple different vantage points. Um, let's start with sort of the, the big picture. Um, the South Hills, uh, the Black Hills of South Dakota are mainly underlain at their core in this area by two types of rock. So we have uh, the Harney Peak granite, which is about 1.7 uh, billion years old. You can see some boulders of it down here, that classic granitic texture. It's a very coarse grain granite. In fact, in some places, it has more of a, a pegmatitic texture to it with these really large crystals. Uh, you can see up here some of the mica crystals and big feldspar crystals in it right through here. Um, and then the other rock type is the metamorphic schist that the granite intrudes. There's a nice outcrop of that uh, right there in the center. And so that rock's a little bit older, up to about two and a half billion years old. And so you've got this lighter colored granite that has intruded this darker metamorphic rock. And this geology is important because it actually played a role in the construction of the monument and how they went about sculpting the faces uh, in the stone. So we're gonna look at that in a little bit of detail here. Okay, so a couple of fun facts here about um, the sculpting of Mount Rushmore. Uh, those faces up there, about 60 or so feet tall, and the project of uh, coring and sculpting these faces took about 14 years or so. Um, here's, a, here's a couple of things I didn't know until I did a little bit of research. So the original design for the presidents was to actually show them uh, from the waist down. And so that's why if you look at Washington, there's still so much of his um, body uh, below his collar. They originally wanted to show it coming down a lot further, but you can see that the reason they didn't do that, the problem they ran into was uh, they ran into this dark layer here, the schist. So once they ran into this completely different rock type with a different texture, uh, and it wasn't gonna sculpt like the granite would, um, that kind of, they had to scrap that plan a little bit. So running into that uh, other rock layer was a bit of an issue. Um, the other cool thing I found out is that notice to the left, uh, or well, our left or Washington's right, there's sort of a, a cleared off area there. There's a, a face, that, um, not a fa human face, but a, a rock face that had been prepared and and chiseled and quarried a little bit. And that's actually where Jefferson was supposed to be. But again, they ran into uh, some differences in the rock quality. Remember this, this granite is not the same texture throughout. You run into these zones with these uh, pegmatites like we have down here where the grain size is, is much bigger. So you can see uh, the difference in texture just from this little zone here where it's coarse grained, um, but pretty equally grained in terms of the crystal size. And then just coming down a little bit lower, uh, you can see how much different that texture is there. And so some of these differences in rock quality and texture played a big role um, in, in determining how this project went. So they ended up moving Jefferson over into the notch over here. We'll get a good look at that here in a second. Uh, and then the different dikes and sills that cut through the rock 
um, were something they had to deal with as well. You can hopefully see some of the white lines cutting through Lincoln's face. And so those have different rock quality or textures as well. So those presented a little bit of a, an obstacle. So let's go along the trail a little bit further and, and see if we can find some more interesting things to look at here. Here's a little better view here. We can see all four president's faces with Jefferson and Roosevelt there in that little um, sort of depression in the rock. But again, you can see the, the schist, the dark colored Precambrian rocks at the bottom and then the intruded magma coming up through it. You can also make out some more of these pegmatite dikes here uh, below Washington's lapels and again some of the different dikes cutting through the rock. You can also see some of the cracks and fractures. The Park Service um, spends a considerable amount of time and effort um, plugging those cracks and putting different sealants on it to try to keep the uh, faces intact. Of course Granite is prone to exfoliation and frost wedging and other weathering processes. So it's probably quite the uphill battle keeping uh, that rock from uh, exfoliating or fracturing and, and parts of it breaking off. Um, last thing you want is, uh, you know, one of the noses or something coming off one of the, one of the president's faces there. Um, and then down here along the, the trail, we get a nice view a little bit more up close and in the sunlight of uh, some of those pegmatitic zones again with the big shiny mica crystals and also uh, the contact with the a little hard to see with the shadows here but there's a nice contact right here with the underlying metamorphic rocks you can see that nice sharp contact through there and then over here um, a nice view of uh, the metamorphic rock. You can see the foliation and the banding in it kind of coming through here uh, in this manner. So good good uh, exposures of the geology here just right along uh, this trail. This is a presidential trail that gets you kind of up close to uh, the rock faces. So let's go a little further and see what else we can find. A little bit further along the trail here to the to the east and you can get a really nice view here of the layering in the the schist so if you look at the the layering there that's what we call foliation and so uh, the foliation in the schist varies quite a bit from sort of moderately dipping like we see here moderately dipping in this case to the east other places it's more uh, vertical or steep and so the foliation would in the metamorphic rocks in this schist would be a product of the pressure so the pressure is coming uh, perpendicular to that layer so in this case from the upper right view to the lower left view that's the preferential direction that the rock was squeezed and so the minerals um, align themselves perpendicular to that pressure uh, and form that really nice foliation you can see up through the trees there in the schist. Awesome. Let's see what else we have out here. Okay, so one last look here at Mount Rushmore and found out a few other little uh, facts that I was unaware of. So um, I was partly correct in that the rock quality um, definitely altered um, the end product, but the reason that it didn't get completely finished was mainly funding and staffing as World War II was about to break out. That was the real um, kind of deal breaker why this project didn't get finished and completed the way uh, Borglum, the sculptor who was in charge of the whole thing, envisioned it. And so that's why you don't see uh, some of the features, especially the lower half of all the presidents are, are more or less incomplete. The other thing I found I found interesting was um, you can see how far recessed Roosevelt's face is there, uh, third from the left. And that's because as they, they originally wanted all the faces to be fairly close to the same position, but they ran into uh, a zone of poor rock quality and some of the schist that caused them to have to cut back further till they could find suitable granite 
to um, sculpt his face. So pretty interesting. Um, I'll make sure I insert somewhere in this video uh, the original uh, sculpture that the scaled model that they were used that they wanted it to look like. Um, pretty interesting history though here. So, and I know I didn't cover it all in great detail. Um, there's definitely places you can go and, and get that more completely. So, but thanks for joining me here. Geology Professor Sean Welsey from Mount Rushmore, just giving you a little bit of insight into how the geology of the area affected this monument. Um, and in some instances dictated the outcome and the, the course of this sculpture and this place in American history. Thanks again for joining me.